Good morning. Hi, welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 370, and we're here live in Southwest Florida waiting on the sun to rise over the buildings and the trees in the east. And this is the gorgeous Gulf of Mexico behind me. We have some beautiful colors here this morning, certainly a little more blue than yesterday. There's still a little bit of peach and gold on the horizon, but definitely predominantly blue. Hi, Grace and Lily. Thanks for joining live. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Hi, Naomi and Christine and Mar. Thanks for joining live. Hi, Judy. Hi, Leanne. So glad Chat is back today. Isn't that wonderful? It was brought to my attention that I could have turned off chat yesterday, but I don't even know where that button would be, so I don't know what happened. Melissa, Carol, Judy, Grace, Lisa, thanks for joining live. Hi, Beatrice. Hi, Marnie. Hi, Lisa. And thanks, everybody, who left me comments in the recorded version yesterday, because then it felt like we were still communicating. Uh, not quite the same, but better than nothing. Hi, Janet and Leanne. Hi, oh, Christine, I already said hi to you. So um, I always encourage people, please leave me comments in the recorded version too. Um, I'm happy to talk to everybody that leaves comments throughout the day. I check it all day long and I really love keeping the community going all day. It's a great place to leave me questions because the, I can see the comments and answer them. And for those of you who maybe would like to read the comments sometimes, it's really great because if there's a question in there that also pertains to you, you can see the uh, answers as well. But uh, really nice comments. We get a lot of really awesome comments. So if you ever feel like reading them, they're a lot of fun. And you can comment, reply to the comments too. Uh, Ruthie, hi, glad you could make it this morning. Yes, the horizon is gorgeous today. Let's turn the camera around so you can see everything and then we'll talk about all this. Uh, I know a lot of people have questions about my shirt and I've got lots of answers for you. Here's the beach to the south of us. Visibility is, ooh, let's see if we can tighten that up. Visibility is not great. Cannot see Marco Island down there, but uh, you def definitely see some of Naples. Here's where, oh, there's one of our bird friends. Maybe it's Curious George. Then we've got the uh, east where the sun's going to come up over those trees in a few minutes. And here's the beach to the north of us. Definitely a lot of activity here. We've got some boot campers. We've got some breeders. We've got some walkers. Oh, we've got some yoga people down there too. Nice. Very nice. Now let's see which one of these needs tightening. Hi, Faye. Hi, Iris. Thanks for joining live. So glad you could be here. So this is a super popular video here on YouTube to make this shirt that I'm wearing. And I get lots and lots and lots of questions about it. Um, and not so much about the crocheting, but about how and why I cut the fabric and why I didn't do anything else to it. And so I wanted to talk about that a little bit this morning. Uh, so we're going to talk about crochet and fabric in general. If you have questions, please feel welcome to ask them. If they're off topic, I'll try. If they're on the topic of crochet on fabric, hopefully it'll be included in what I'm sharing or we can add it in. But always feel welcome to chime in if you want. So this is a free pattern on my website. Don't think it has a name. I think it's just crochet on fabric t-shirt. Uh, but if you type in, in the search bar, crochet on fabric, this will come up. Also here on YouTube, I have a playlist all about crochet on fabric projects. So if you, go, if you search that on my YouTube channel, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, and you know that there have been some new patterns released for layers crochet that involve crochet on fabric. One of my favorite side or uh, sub genres of crochet. Ah, Janet made this shirt from my YouTube video and that's how she found me. Well, that's wonderful, Janet. What a great thing to share this morning. All right, so this is a plain old $2 Walmart t-shirt, okay? Nothing special about it, just plain old white t-shirt. But it had a traditional neckline and hem, just like at the sleeves and the bottom down here. So what I did was I took sharp scissors and I cut just outside the line of the neck band and maybe a little bit longer. And if you watch the video or read the pattern, it'll tell you more specifically what I did. And then 
I crocheted right onto the fabric. I did not hem the t-shirt fabric. And this is the question that I get asked an awful lot. Yes, there are fabrics that you must hem after you cut so they don't fray. Machine knit t-shirts is not one of them. Seriously, seriously, it's not one of them. I cut this shirt several years ago, crocheted on the edging. I have now washed it and dried it, and we'll get to the washing instructions in a second because that's the other question I get asked a ton about. I have washed this, oh, I don't know, a dozen times in the washing machine, and I'm gonna show you this edge up close again. Zero fray. That is the cut raw edge from where I cut the t-shirt. Isn't that amazing? Hi, Terry. Hi, Lynn. I'm going to get that nice and close so you can see. Can you see that it's the raw edge of the t-shirt? And after all that wear and all that washing, there is still no sign of fraying. So I feel like now is absolutely the most fabulous time to share that with you because I didn't just make it. We can make things look really perfect when we're just made, but it's about over time, the wear, the use, the dancing, the partying, whatever you do in your crochet on fabric t-shirts, and then the washing. I mean, that's a lot of pressure on a piece of clothing. As you know, some things don't last your wardrobe a couple seasons, some things last longer. But for a $2 t-shirt that I crocheted myself onto and it's lasted this long beautifully, that's remarkable. So I just wanted to show you that Yes, this is the raw edge, and no, this is not a fabric that you need to hem first. Um, uh, sure, Barbara, you could make any type of a t-shirt with this type of technique. You could certainly do off the shoulder. In fact, this one kind of is. If you went just a little deeper right here, it would definitely be off the shoulder. And the construction of this yoke is that I decreased as I went. So if you actually went more aggressive, in your lower shoulder version of this, you could make it more off the shoulder. Actually, you said cold shoulder though, didn't you? You didn't say off the shoulder. Okay, let's see. Here's how I would do cold shoulder. This would be really pretty actually. Let's say you cut this seam line too. So imagine if you cut straight across both, um, oh, Lily. Um, Lily, you'll have to check the pattern. I think it's made with one tidbit of Be So Fine yarn, which is 215 yards, but I, I can't recall specifically. But if you go to the pattern page, it'll definitely tell you. It's possible. Um, so if we were going to do this cold shoulder style, what I would think to do is while it was still a full t-shirt, I would cut straight up the, the center of the sleeve and then cut low across the t-shirt and then cut here. So then you'd have a front and a back, they'd be separate. So then I would do both pieces separately and do this kind of a stitch pattern along this edge in rows and then turn it around and do the same thing on the back. And on that last row, I would crochet these two sections together. So it would be semi cold shoulder. You'd have a panel of lace coming up here and then it would cover here and then it would be solid lace here. I want to do that. That sounds beautiful. You know what else would be pretty is if you did that here too. You could cut this seam and put a crochet panel. And if you wanted to actually make it wider as it got lower, you would create more hip ease and make more flowy top. I mean, the possibilities are endless because here's the thing. Any of the things I'm talking about, you could make the whole thing in crochet or knitting. You could make the fabric, but the really exciting part to me about working with t-shirts is half the fabric's already made for you. Ideally, you're just doing the edging and the seaming by doing all of these different things. So um, it just, it takes a project that would normally take 60 to 80 hours and shorten it down to maybe 10 or 15 hours because most of the fabric's done for you. It's just fun. And besides, I just feel like it's, um, it's just a, another look, you know. I feel a little more dressy and a little more put together in this top than if I wore a plain old t-shirt. I don't often wear a plain old t-shirt when I leave the house unless it's, I don't know, take the garbage out, whatever, <laughs> or with a jacket or a cardigan over it. So for me, this turns it into a top that I would enjoy wearing dressed up and leaving the house. 
So a great way to transform a $2 t-shirt. Um, yeah, Leanne, you can definitely put a, t uh, a short sleeve on a, on a tank top. Oh yeah, using the bling yarn would be... Depending on the type of fabric you use, you can either use a crochet hook and just crochet right into the fabric, or make a stitch with a yarn needle and yarn first, and you end up crocheting into that stitch like a chain. Personally, I prefer to use finer weight um, fabrics so that I can pierce the fabric with a crochet hook, and that way it um, just saves, saves a step. Yeah, it turns a plain old t-shirt into a feminine top. Absolutely, Lily. I love that. And I'm wearing uh, my Kelly earrings today in white. Might be a little matchy-matchy. I'm not a huge fan of matchy-matchy, so uh, I don't know what I was thinking this morning. I don't hate it, but I think it's a little matchy-matchy. <laughs> Might need something else. Uh, does, anybody, um, does anybody have any other questions about fabrics or... Oh, sure you could add beads, Renee. You would treat this like any other crochet project. The only difference is that you didn't make the whole fabric. That's it. Anything else that you would want to or try to do, this is no different than if you started this on a long crochet chain or foundation ovals or foundation stitches. This is no different. Once you've joined it to the fabric, it is a normal crochet project. So hopefully that helps to take some of the pressure off of you because although it is a totally different kind of technique it's only the beginning part of the technique that's different the rest of it is exactly what you know so you could even do this with motifs right so let's say you did your first uh your first pickup row of stitches along here you could then leave those as chains or stitches or whatever and then take your motifs and join them to that one round that you placed on there Oh yeah, the black shoulder, the black sleeve, uh, cap sleeve one's really cute too, Lily. I agree. I bought ten uh, different colors of tank tops at Walmart recently to do a whole series of these, and it's going to be so fun. One of them is already done and so pretty. Uh, I just I don't have them all done, so I don't. I'm not ready to share it. Plus, I've got the books to write. I've got so much so many other things going on that uh, it's just not at the top of the list yet, which I have to say as an entrepreneur is one of the most valuable uh, traits to have and that's discipline because um, it is very difficult to not just jump from what looks fun to what looks fun. I really, it's really, really important to stay disciplined so that you, you know, your actions match your words and you get things done on time, um, but very, very challenging when you're always excited about stuff. Um, I've, uh, yes, good day. I've done this on a, uh, a V-neck. I've done a, a triangular motif to cover for the V-neck because the V-neck was too low. I highly encourage you to look at the playlist here on YouTube on my channel called Crochet on Fabric and you'll find all of these projects there where I've done sleeves and yokes and the V part of uh, a too short um, or too low V-neck. Thanks, Renee. Thank you. Oh, Janet wants to do it too, and so does Marnie. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it's such a fun way to elevate regular, everyday, comfortable clothes. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna sneeze. Maybe not, it's coming though. Laura wants to do it too, yay! All right, well, for everybody that's excited now, I encourage you to go to the playlist here on my YouTube channel called Crochet and Fabric, and you can start with those projects, and then hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll have more of these. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, and all of them so far are done with Be So Fine yarn. I believe tidbits, but I'm not 100%. Thank you, Lisa. Wonderful. All right, what else did I bring to show you today? Oh, I did have a request yesterday to show the colors of the new colors of Dazzling Yarn again. So I'm going to do that really quickly. So we have our two existing colors, our gorgeous metallic neutrals. We've got silver and gold. Whoopsie. We've got our silver and gold. And then uh, the two new colors 
and I did get a request to bring in black and I believe I will do that soon but right now we've got turquoise and fuchsia pink all so incredibly gorgeous so if you want to add some contrast or complementary color to whatever yarns you're using either of these would be amazing and if you're unsure but just want to add some bling you could add one of the gold or silver and if you're torn again still between gold and silver think about what color uh, jewelry you wear if you're more of a gold tone earrings bracelets rings i would go with the gold and if you're more of a silver person i'd go with the silver but if otherwise Pick whatever your heart speaks to your heart. So even if you wear all silver jewelry and that gold is just calling your name, go for it. Doesn't matter. I used to be a silver person and I've definitely gone more gold in the last decade or so, but I still do both. And I don't believe in the rules that you can't mix. Uh, I think all metallics are gorgeous, so. Okay, let's see if there are any more questions. Um, Oh, thanks, Lisa. Yeah. Is your raven black? Yes, Marnie, the color raven is black. Yes, I have that in Be So Fine yarn and in Be So Sporty yarn. You can get the colorway raven. You're welcome. What else? Oh, I have the samples still from those too. So here's the Dazzling Tears shawl. Look at how beautiful the gold looks on white. I think it just looks like looks like a goddess when you wear white and gold together isn't that beautiful so imagine if you had a white dress on and you wore the gold over it wouldn't that be just gorgeous i also love it just on skin tone too so if you're going strapless with a dress i think that looks amazing too and don't forget this kind of project if you wanted to actually have sleeves for the ceremony at a wedding you could actually join these at the bottom down here and turn this easily turn this into a shrug you know this is the kind of shrug that sleeves isn't that amazing? Oh God, I wish I had somewhere to wear that. I would totally do this. I would sew up from here to here and make those sleeves to wear over a strapless gown. So, so pretty. Cause look at where the strapless gown would come here is where the sleeve would start. So pretty. Oh, yep, one day. Maybe one day on the red carpet, who knows? or walking down the aisle. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, thanks, Renata. Thank you, Renee. Does anybody have any other questions? And I'll look and see what other bags are, what other tricks I have in my bags this morning. Ah, Kimberly wants the sequins yarn now. How many balls did it take to make that? I um, don't know what you're asking about, uh, but any of the patterns are on my website and you can see all of them there. The gold sequin shawl is called the Dazzling Tears Shawl. It is a uh, free pattern on my website. It is also a video here on YouTube, so you can look up Dazzling Tears either way. How many balls did it take? You'll have to look uh, at the pattern, Christine. I don't recall off the top of my head. Definitely more than one. There's only a hundred yards in each spool, but um, you'll have to you'll have to look at the website. It's there. Bought the silver and gold. Oh, Christine's got the pink coming. Yes, I might have set, shipped that yesterday. And then here's a, a shawl from 80 Handmade Gifts. Can the tidbit? Um, I'm, it's, can the, oh, no, can the tidbit make two something? Uh, I don't know. Christine, what if they all speak to your heart? Then you need all four, definitely. <laughs> That's the way I feel. You have no idea how often, you, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there too. Um, how many times do you buy something and love it and go back and buy it in every color? Oh, back, go back and buy a second one just to um, just to make sure that you never are without it again. I do that all the time. Uh, a beaded necklace. Someone's asking about a, um, the crystal chain necklace, or I'm not sure which necklace you're talking about. But if you want to email me a specific question about a pattern like that, that you, if you can't. The Caribbean turquoise beaded necklace. Uh, no, that takes a full, um, that's the necklace scarf. That takes a full tidbit. You can't make two of them with a tidbit. 
that one that takes a full fit. That's a pretty decent sized scarf for 200 yards, actually. In crochet, I, I was surprised I was able to make each of the crochet necklace scarves with one tidbit. That was a, I think, I think that was a really great use of stretching out 200 yards. You're welcome, uh, Debbie, Debbie, I think. Can't read a pattern instead of a video. I'm not sure what you're asking about, Christine. Um, so many conversations, I can't remember to, uh, what you asked about. There's videos on lots of patterns though. Um, can't remember which one you were asking about. If you're asking about this shirt, yes, there's a video for this shirt. There's also a pattern on my website. There's a full playlist here on YouTube with videos all about all kinds of projects that I've crocheted on fabric. That's a great place to start too. And on any video that I have that talks about a pattern, there is a link to that pattern in the video description, every single one. So anytime you watch a video of mine and it refers to something that you want on my website, there's a link. And if you ever can't find it, you just leave a comment in that video and I reply back to you and help you with whatever you need. Uh, Renata. Yes, Renata, I'm grateful every single day to be able to uh, sit here at the beach. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed the article in Crochet World. Okay, that person, uh, Christine's asking about, yes, there's a video on this and a free pattern and it's uh, called The Dazzling Tears. You can find the link, you can find it here on YouTube or you can find it on my website. And the one on my website will have the video, the yarn and the video all embedded into there. Oh, thank you, Christine. It takes 250 yards for this shawl. So that's, that uses three balls. It's three balls of Be So Dazzling because they're 100 yards each. So it would take three balls to make this. Yeah, this would be amazing as crocheted sleeves too. Absolutely. Be wonderful for a wedding this summer. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna bring in black next. Uh, Constance, is it too late to get layers? No, it's never too late to get layers crochet. Uh, if you uh, need me to resend you the link, please send me an email and just tell me your order number and I'll be happy to do that. No problem. Okay, are there any more questions about anything we've talked about? Because if not, I'm gonna move on and share something else. Okay, Constance, if you could email me with your order number, I would be more than happy to help you. Could you see the blue shawl again? Absolutely. Oh, I didn't finish talking about this one. I think I got distracted and answered a question. Okay, so this is from 80 Handmade Gifts, and this one is different from using the dazzling yarn all by itself. Here, this one, I use it as a carry-along yarn with Be So Tender yarn and Be So Sporty Bling. And it just has a totally different look because it just, you get those pops of sequins on the yarn. So I use all different shades of blues and greens in the combining of the yarns. And then the sequin yarn is in silver. So you don't actually see the thread of the yarn. You just see those pops of shimmer. And this is a... <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> sorry. I, I knew I had a sneeze coming. So this is a knit pattern. Thank you, Judy. This is a knit pattern with drop stitches in it. And the beauty of drop stitches is that when you drop them, you end up seeing the texture of the yarn. So it's a really great way to show off unusual or unique texture. And by combining yarns, you automatically created unusual texture in the, dro in the drops. But we also added the thick and thin, the sequin, the bling yarn, so there's a silver thread in the bamboo, and there's just so much texture that it really makes the drop stitch really extra special. Another thing, what if you made two of these and sewed them on the shoulders? You could even do cold shoulders too. Two of these would make a really cool poncho, wouldn't that? And I think that could be worn at night. I think it could be a beach cover up, but it could also be something that you would wear uh, for evening. So. 
imagine if you made two of these and sewed them from the shoulder to the tip down there. Or show, show, sewed it just at one point here and one point down there. And then you'd still have cold shoulder too. That would be really beautiful. Beatrice, the live stream is sputtering. Could be your connection. And I'm not sure. Uh, thank you for all the bless me's. Thank you. I have such a loud sneeze. It embarrasses Marlon something terrible. Oh well. Not much you can do about it. However, you were given your sneeze. That's what you, you get. What you get, right? I don't know how I could change that. Don't want to either. I think my head might explode if I tried to stop a sneeze. <laughs> Okay, does anybody have any other questions? If not, we're gonna go to the journal and read today's quote. Okay, so today I'm still on notebook one, issue five. And, okay, this quote is by Dama Papa Kanto the Knight. And, hi. Okay, okay, so here's today's quote. By the constant fall of water drops, a pitcher is filled. Likewise, the wise person accumulating merit little by little becomes full of merit. How great is that for baby steps, right? And we talk about this all the time. You just have to make one step forward on anything. I don't care if you're trying to learn how to cook, trying to learn how to knit or crochet, trying to get more organized in your house, trying to be more patient with the people around you, or trying to learn a new language. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. Every little bit accumulates and brings you closer to your goal. So I'm gonna read this again. By the constant fall of water drops, a pitcher is filled. Likewise, the wise person accumulating merit little by little becomes full of merit. Gosh, I love that one. Love any bit of encouragement that doing little things will add up and count as big things eventually because it gets hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel sometimes, right? Hi, Pamela, thanks for joining live. I saw a, con a question about yarn while I was reading and I couldn't get to it. So if you'd like me to still answer your question, please add it to uh, a comment in the recorded version. If you enjoy today's podcast or my podcast in general, please give it a thumbs up. YouTube likes to see uh, what kind of con YouTube gauges what kind of value your content has by the number of thumbs up and comments, apparently. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you enjoy me being here. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button so you'll always know when I have new patterns released. And also, if you click that bell notification button, you'll always get notified when I'm live so you can join in the interactive quality of my live stream videos here at the beach or wherever else I take you. Hope you enjoyed everything today. Hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the sound of the waves, chatting with me and everyone else here. And gosh, love all the questions today. That was wonderful. Love to be able to answer questions live. It's so much fun. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today 